the Eagles at the Texans. To me, honestly, is a, a more difficult game to preview than I than I expected. What? Yeah, because I think Devontae Smith and Damian Pierce and Miles Sanders I, are, 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 are uh, you know, you could have a lot of questions about them. You don't agree? I, I would like to start all of my Eagles. Maybe yes. Devontae Smith, you have two to three wide receivers you like more, but that's only because you have four top 20 wide receivers, apparently. Good job. Hmm. Um, I'm not scared of the Eagles' run defense right now. They've basically given up 130 yards to running backs three weeks in a row. They're I have a great stat. Can I throw it a stat? And, I, and Damian Pierce is hugely involved in the passing game now and really good. There's yeah. not enough good running backs to sit Damian Pierce. Okay, wait, wait, here, here's my stat. You're probably right. We can do this game pretty quickly. Running backs. Okay, so the Eagles drafted Jordan Davis, a uh -huh. gigantic man in the first round. And he basically only plays on running downs, but he is already one of the best run stoppers in football. Running backs are averaging 6.1 yards per carry against the Eagles when Jordan Davis is off the field. 3.46 yards per carry when Jordan Davis is on the field. He has a high ankle sprain. He will be off the field for a while. So it's not a bad matchup. I think, I, I guess I was worried about score. I was worried about a potential blowout here. You're talking about one of the best, the best team in football, maybe going up against the Texans. He is involved in the passing game, Damian Pierce. Yes. Do you like him better than Miles Sanders, though, who has this amazing matchup against a team that's allowed 20 or more PPR fantasy points to nine running backs in their last 13 games dating back to 2021? Sanders or Pierce? They are back-to-back -back for me. They are both top 12 for me. I have Sanders higher than Pierce in PPR because the Texans' run defense is brutal, and they're playing on a short week. They've got to turn it around quickly. Sanders only had nine carries last week. He's going to be fresh as a daisy going into this game. Yeah, I I think um, in non-PPR, they're just about that close and both top 12 for me as well. In full PPR, there's a little more distance, but they're both top 15, and I'm starting both. I prefer Pierce in both formats. You got really lucky with Pierce last week, by the way. He was having a miserable game until the final drive. The final drive kind of changed all the stats. Total garbage time padding for the Texans, not just for him, but also I for Brandon I don't want to hear total garbage time padding from you, Dave Richard. Oh, whatever. Mr. Joe Burrow delivers you a victory when he shouldn't even have been in this stupid football game. <laughs> there wasn't any It's 32 to no, 6 with 8 whatsoever. minutes left, and you're playing your franchise quarterback? I'm what not saying doing? that garbage time stats shouldn't count. I'm just saying you get a little lucky sometimes with players who play in garbage time. And Damian Pierce and Brandon Cooks are examples of that from last week, and I guess Joe Burrow too. So that's fine. You can certainly count on that for – for Pierce, if you want, I'm starting Pierce. He's too good of a player to to completely pass up. Uh, it and I love your stat, Adam. <laughs> it wasn't garbage time, by the way. I mean, that game that game came down to an onside kick. It was what seventeen to three late. So you had, yeah, it was Joe only Burrows was most game. certainly garbage. Joe time. Burrows was garbage time, and that, the whole game was garbage for them. But what's the definition of garbage time? Uh, you have no chance to win. The game's over. <laughs> All right, so maybe after the coin toss was garbage time for the Texans. <laughs> and that's it what will be that's tomorrow what night. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I think you're right. All right. So Devontae Smith, I mean, look, you could say I want to start Devontae Smith, but you got to worry a little bit about pass attempts here, um, which haven't necessarily mattered for Devontae Smith. But let me just see. He's got, he's got uh, fewer than 50 yards in four out of seven games. So that's not good. He also doesn't get a lot of, red zone targets. He has four red zone, two green zone targets. He has two touchdowns this year. Um, you know, is it that easy to just say start Devontae Smith? He is the most difficult call in this game. Mm -hmm. True. Okay. So let's talk about some wide receivers that you'd start ahead of him and, and behind him. G uh, DJ Moore, or Devontae Smith. Give me more. <laughs> I believe I have more ranked higher. I do. You, Dave, have Tyler Boyd and Juju Smith-Schuster right behind Devontae Smith. Are you going to stick with that? I think I will. I have Keith, them both you, ahead of Boyd? I have them both ahead. ahead. Okay. How about um, how about Christian Kirk against the Raiders? That's Devontae. I will take Kirk. How about Michael Pittman or Smith? Devontae. 
I will take Devontae. I'm going to start Devontae over any receiver who, who's, I, I can't say upside, but maybe like just most likely outcome is 12 PPR points. Like I will take the chance on Smith outscoring 12 PPR points. Now the one guy that you might say I'm crazy for ranking him ahead of is Juju because Juju has blasted 12 PPR points in his past few games. So that one I might go back and double check on. But I, I think that Smith's upside just shouldn't be ignored, especially against Houston. Their defense, they look terrible against the – they were horrible against the run last week. No, not against they're, the pass. They're, they were, yeah, they looked amazing against the 10 passes. Well, no, they've actually been good against the pass, basically. So they, they are like top five against quarterbacks and wide receivers. They have two cornerbacks who are ranked in the top 24 in coverage grade by PFF. Um, Steven Nelson, and uh, he's like fifth best or something. And yeah, he's having a good year. And uh, their slot corner, whose name eludes me at the moment. But I, I think it's been a lot of competition. You know, you know, they faced two good offenses this year, and both offenses put up over 30 points. It was the Raiders and the Chargers. And you can even debate how good those offenses are. So I'm not really buying their pass defense. But I just want to say, on paper, they've done a very good job against wide receivers. They've done a very good job against, uh, against uh, quarterbacks as well. So Brandon Cooks is the last one I'll ask you about here. Brandon Cooks. Um, no. Brandon Cooks or Michael Pittman? <laughs> Pittman. Yeah. Pittman. I, I wonder if Cooks' ceiling is 12 PPR points. I, I wonder if Cooks is not going to play. Just because of how he reacted this week? Maybe. Uh, That'll make him an easy sit. Brandon Cooks or Garrett Wilson? I'll take the chance on Wilson. I do have Cooks one spot ahead of Wilson right now. I have Cooks ahead of Zay Jones, Alec Pierce, Marvin Jones, Julio Jones. Um, Donovan Peoples-Jones. Well, he's not playing yeah. this week. June Jones. Last, one more question. One more question. Start Dallas got it, by the way. One more question. Yeah. Jonathan Taylor, DeAndre Swift, Deontay Foreman. Are you starting those three guys over Miles Sanders and Damian Pierce? No. I don't believe so. None of them? No. Um, Foreman, well, that's the problem. If Chuba misses practice on Wednesday and Thursday, then I would probably start Foreman over Sanders. If Chuba is even a limited participant, then I'm starting Sanders because I would definitely prefer Sanders to Foreman if Hubbard is back. Foreman will get more work than Sanders. I, I would you, feel pretty good about that. And that Bengals run defense, I mean, you all saw it on Monday. It's starting to dissipate a little bit. And you're telling me that you're starting Sanders and Pierce over Jonathan Taylor and DeAndre Swift. Yes. 